I actually um, grew up in the South Bronx in uh, Mount Haven Projects, and um, my school is actually not very far now from um, where I grew up. So it's 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 a, a sweet homecoming for me, as I've spent, as uh, the introductions uh, indicated, I've spent a lot of years in lots of other places. Uh, Philadelphia Public Schools uh, did some work in the Boston uh, area. Um, and in New York City, never actually worked in the Bronx. I've only been in the Bronx and in uh, Brooklyn and Queens. So I'm very happy to be back in the boogie down, as we call it. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, innovation in education as I see it in terms of where we've been um, and talk a little bit about where I think we are going. Um, so I'm in the interest of time, I'm going to kind of get all of these up here quickly because I think that all of these are the kinds of things that we've experienced, uh, those of us who've been this, in this work for about 20 years or more, we've lived through all these kinds of things that have been um, ushered in under the uh, heading of doing something to innovate in education. So we have magnet schools where we try to get uh, upper and middle class families to return to our schools and we have alternative certification so get lots of other people to who haven't been teachers before to become teachers and we say oh yeah how about we try merit pay and get teachers to earn more by doing more for kids and some folks have said how about vouchers let's give parents a, a little check and say go go wherever you want to go with your with your uh, tax dollars to another school and then there's the standards movement and there's school takeover by state education departments and mayoral control and mayors how many mayors in our country now call themselves education mayors um, I know there's some superintendents in the room I'd love to hear your take on who who the folks are who are really education mayors in our country um, we've got small schools uh, break down these big schools and, and make them into small all little um, communities and um, lots of curriculum reform and a lot of this work we are still in fact living through um, and indeed uh, charter schools uh, another effort um, undertaken in the name of innovation and and that's the space that I'm I'm, I'm working in um, today and I, I, I've been thinking a lot about um, what is it exactly that we were trying to fix? Like, what's the question we were trying to answer when we came up with these um, innovations? Um, and so I think that one big bucket of questions had to do with what to teach, right? So what tools do we use to teach? How long do we do it? Should the day be longer? Should the periods be longer? Should we do block scheduling? Which kids and what combinations and how many should be in a room? Um, and then how do we measure, right? How much of our time and energy in the last 20 years has gone to figuring out new ways of measuring what we teach? And then there's the bucket around who should teach, right? So you've got all of the alternative certification programs and you've got lots of questions raised around who should monitor the teaching, right? Who should supervise it? The mayor, the superintendent, the principal, the team leader, um, our peers, should our parents be involved in the supervision of our, our, our teaching? And then, of course, folks want to talk about how much are you actually paying folks to do this thing called teaching. I think another bucket of questions had to do, of course, with how to actually do this work, right? Which practices make the most sense? When do you use them? What kinds of things should happen at the beginning of the school day? What things should happen at the end of the school day? Should we have school in the summer? How do we chunk our time? Um, I think the most interesting bucket of questions that come out of this work around innovation in education have to do with why we do this thing in the first place. Why are we doing this? What exactly is the purpose? What's our intention around what we teach and how we teach it? And what's the impact? And impact versus result, right? Is I'm over the whole, is there an achievement gap? How, it, how big is the achievement gap? I'm, I'm over that conversation. I'm really over it because in the end, there are kids who are sitting in our classrooms living in the gap. So what are we doing about that? And for me, innovation really has to be about this question of impact. So let me talk a little bit about Bronx Prep and where we sit in this conversation today. 
We are, in fact, a college prep school. Our work is about getting young people who typically would not go to college prepared and ready for college. So our students are kids who come from poor families. We're about 86% Title I. Our kids are kids whose families don't speak English as a first language. They are kids who have special education needs. They're kids like me. A little black girl from the projects in the South Bronx was not supposed to go to Penn. She was not supposed to have a graduate degree, a few, from a place like Harvard. That was not supposed to happen, right? So I'm, I sort of see myself in this beating the odds category. Well, that's what my work is about, really, with our students. And so for me, the next conversation is about how do we make that impact much more meaningful beyond the 700 kids who happen to have been plucked out of the lottery to come to Bronx Prep. We have, to be, we have to be smarter than that, to really think that we've made a difference because we selected this set and we put them in this beautiful $20 million facility in one of the poorest neighborhoods in the country, and we now pat ourselves on the back and say, good job. There's much, much more work to be done. Right, right. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So. These are sort of the two big buckets that I'm looking at um, and invite you to join in our work around being innovative in education. So on, Dece on or about December 1st every year at Bronx Prep, we do a big ceremony. You saw our students coming down. That, that prior slide was actually a graduation day. But on December, about December 1st every year, our senior class, we do a rally. All of the students, fifth grade through 11th grade, all the faculty members, parents, community members, anybody who is willing to take a few hours off work that day comes out, lines up our yard. My cheerleading team gets out their pom-poms. My jazz band gets ready to play. And those seniors come bursting through the sign, and they have their college applications in hand. And we all march down to the college, to the post office and mail off their college applications. And we do that because we are so proud of them, just as many places in our country, when the football team is getting ready to play on Friday night, don't we lose our minds? Don't we figure out how to rally when the budgets look tight and that basketball or that athletic program is getting ready to cut, get cut? We figure out a way to raise that money because that is important to us. Well, at Bronx Prep, you're preparing to go to college, and that's what's important to us. And so, in my mind, it's great that we do that at Bronx Prep, but guess what? There's 3,000 seniors in the South Bronx, 3,000. So my little 65 that's going to graduate next year is just a drop in the bucket. And I say to my kids, we must all be that giant grain of sand, right? You can't just be in your little world. And so we're thinking, how do we collaborate with the high schools around us? They need not be charters. They need not be a particular traditional public school. Anybody, anybody who says that they are invested in the lives of young people, I invite you to get on board, get on board. We've got 3,000 high school students in high school that we want marching on December 1st next year because their college apps are ready to go. The other big piece of this innovation question that I think we have missed in a big way has to do with our parents. Where have our families been in this conversation around the kinds of things that are transformational that we're all undertaking? And so we've been thinking just about, again, our first, little, our first little program where we have 15 parents who come out on Thursday night and another 15 that come out on Saturday afternoons because they are working on their GEDs, and another 10 or so who are trying to learn English. And so they're in an S in ESL program. Well, what might it be like, what might it be like if on graduation day, when my seniors are walking in their robes, 
I've got another program right after they graduate where their families are walking across the stage. Auntie, grandma, uncle, cousin, the guy who you see when you walk to school every day with nothing to do, nowhere to go, no job to go to, walking across that stage with his diploma, with his GED, with her certificate that she has learned English and is now ready to take advantage of other opportunities that are available to them. And so for me, this notion of innovation can't just be about the impact on students, but we have to raise the family. The entire family has to be impacted. So if we get those two things rocking and rolling, and now we're really talking about increasing the impact, then we've got to spread, right? Because we can't create l even more islands of success, right? I'm so proud of what we do at Bronx Prep. You can't stop me from grinning when you talk about Bronx Prep. But two blocks from me is another awesome school. How many times have I talked to the head of school at that other school? Twice. Twice. You know what we talked about? Security issues. At dismissal time, kids were getting robbed on the corner of 3rd Avenue and Claremont Parkway. We need to put our heads together. How can my security work with your security work with the local precinct to make sure that our kids are safe going home? That's what we talked about. That's what we talked about. That's not the work. That's not the work to be done if we say we are innovative, if we say that we are, in fact, having impact. And so again, the, the, the invitation is to, I, I'm, a, I'm an alumni of Horace Mann, right? So the invitation is to the folks up on the hill, literally up on the hill, to work with Bronx Prep, to work with the local traditional public schools, because there's great things happening in all of those places. And until we figure out ways to connect these successful practices, folks who are really having life-changing impact, I think we missed the boat. And we'll keep doing more, getting more of what we've been getting. I also think it's critically important that we never, ever forget those who are the least successful among us. Our children who come to us with special education needs, come from families who don't speak English as a first language, come from highly impoverished situations, are young men who are dropping out of school. I, I don't remember. I think it was our, our brother Lu Yen who had the this, this slide up from uh, about black males and statistics around black males. So we all understand that these are issues. But when are we going to connect the folks who, are, who have figured out some things to do about it. I'm, I'm surrounded. I mean, talk about kindred spirit in this room. I'm surrounded with folks who are creating solutions. But if we don't figure out ways, if we don't figure out ways to tighten that weave in the net, we're going to keep getting just the same that we've gotten. The last point I'll make is, We've got to also be thinking about how do we replicate these fantastic things in other places. I, I'm, I'm in the South Bronx, but I don't have to travel very far to find the same issues. Harlem, Queens, Chicago, LA, Atlanta. And I haven't even left the, I haven't even left the, the, the country. And so the other piece that I ask of you and invite you to help us think about and build solutions around is this notion of connecting the communities that are about reform. I think if we commit to this work, indeed, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we will be able to, in fact, say, Welcome to the revolution. Thank you all very much for your time.